Welcome back. We're over here in in 1 Samuel verse, chapter 30, verses 9 to 15 today. Uh, David's family's been hauled off by the Amalekites, and he sought the Lord. The Lord says, go and get him. Do it, you know, go and, and seek this out, and I'll get you everything back. Let's read verses 9 to 15 now and see what happens next. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Beser, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Beser. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David, and they gave him bread and he ate, and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, a servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind, because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Can you take me down to this troop? So he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. So here's a guy. He is the one guy in all the land that knows exactly who did this and where they've gone and what they're doing. And he just happens. He just happens to fall sick um, and be left behind. <laughs> uh, as you might catch the hint there, I think there might be some providential things going on here, don't you? So David uh, helps him. He feeds him. He gives him water. He gives him food. He gets him totally up to speed here. And he, he eats. He's, he hasn't eaten for three days. So he's, he's a little bit focused, I'm sure, on, on his hunger. David lets him get completely caught up there. And then David questions him, gets the information he needs, and there you have it. So uh, God's providential operation, I think, in work, working in front of us here, just as, as we've seen so many times. Did that end 3,000 years ago in the time of David? Did that end? No, I don't think so. That is still true for us today. God can still work for you and I providentially. But again, we want to seek him first, and then he'll bless us. But if we make God an afterthought, we, we are going to miss uh, the blessings and the helps he has for us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we see your working providentially so that David can recover his wives and children and, and, and all the things that have been taken away. Your providence is still operational. Work for us, Lord. Help us to be right. Help us to slow down long enough to get insight from you about what to do next. And help us to follow the example David gives here of treating this uh, this starving person kindly, those things too. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So God is at work. God has not left his throne. God is working for you and I. Question is, are you and I seeking and watching for providence? See what God's doing, are we? Let's do that and may God bless you and be with you today in all that you do.